forward to the book Ramayana written by Kamala Subramanyam. The foreword has been written by Swami Ranganathananda on August 22nd, 1981. Swami Ranganathananda is from Ramakrishna Mutt, Hyderabad. He writes, After presenting to the English reading public two great books of the Hindu tradition earlier, namely the Mahabharatam and the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimati Kamala Subramanyam is now offering to the readers a third great book of the Hindu tradition, namely the Ramayana of Valmiki. Like the two previous books, this one also is an abridged edition of the large epic, retaining, however, all the essential parts of the book and its inspirational flow of epic narrative. Eulogizing the two great epics of India, Swami Vivekananda says, In fact, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata are the two encyclopedias of the ancient Aryan life and wisdom, portraying an ideal civilization which humanity has yet to aspire after. The Ramayana has been the perennial source of spiritual culture, spiritual, cultural and artistic inspiration for, tho- for these thousands of years, not only to the people of India, but also to the peoples of Southeast Asian countries. It has enriched the national literatures of these countries and has also provided themes for every form of their art, dance, drama, music, painting and sculpture. Its heroic characteris- characters have helped to mould the Hindu character and its three great personalities, namely Rama, Sita and Hanuman, have inspired millions of her people, high or low, in the socio-economic scale, with the deepest, tenderest and holiest love, reverence and devotion. All Hindu spiritual teachers, ancient and modern, have responded ecstatically to this great book and its heroes. Says Swami Vivekananda in the course of his lecture on the sages of India, Rama, the ancient idol of the heroic ages, the embodiment of truth, of morality, the ideal son, the ideal husband, the ideal father, and above all, the ideal king. This Rama had been presented before us by the great sage Valmiki. No language can be purer, none chaster, none more beautiful and at the same time simpler than the language in which the great poet has depicted the life of Rama. And what to speak of Sita? You may exhaust the literature of the world that is past and I may assure you that you will have to exhaust the literature of the world of the future before finding another Sita. Sita is unique. That character was depicted once and for all. There may have been several Ramas perhaps, that, but never more than one Sita. There may have been several Rama perhaps, but never more than one Sita. She is the very type of the true Indian women for all the Indian ideals of a perfected woman have grown out of that one life of Sita. And here she stands these thousands of years commanding the worship of every man, woman and child throughout the length and breadth of Arya Varta. There she will always be this glorious Sita purer than purity itself, all patience and all suffering. Rotarian Honorary, the late V. S. Srinivasa Shastri, India's distinguished scholar and statesman, in his famous lectures on the Ramayana delivered in Madras in 1944 and published by the Madras Sanskrit Academy, invited the Indian youth to benefit from this great and immortal epic of their country. (coughs) He writes, Perhaps the Ramayana is not quite as familiar to the younger generations that are coming up. 
as it was to us of an older day is it not true alas that great numbers of our youth at school and college are being brought up without adequate knowledge of the very springs of our civilization and culture is it an exaggeration to say that a student of the ramayana not out of touch with its sanctity and its unequaled importance to the study of our civilization can talk to an audience largely composed of the younger generation with some hope of profiting them i believe there is and in the coming years there is going to be a greater need than ever of our going back with reverent hearts to this most beautiful and moving of all stories in literature i cannot conclude this foreword better than by quoting the two popular verses which salute in highly elevating poetic imageries the greatness of the intensely human sage poet valmiki and the heroic and self effacing devotee hanuman kujantam rama rameti mudhuram maduraksharam arya kavita sakham vande valmiki kokilam i salute valmiki the kukku who perching on the tree of poesy melodiously sings the sweet syllables rama rama sita rama gunaga gunagram punyaranya viharin o vande vishuddha vijhin anau kavis vara kapis varau i salute the master of kavis that is poet valmiki and the master of kapis that is monkeys hanuman who are endowed with pure reason and who move who move freely and joyously in the sacred grove of the myriad virtues and graces of rama and sita the author and publishers have done a great service to humanity by bringing out this immortal epic in a pleasantly readable edition swami ranganatha ananda om shri ramar panamast jai shri ram falashruti of reading and listening to ramayana this story was composed by valmiki the sage in ancient times it is hallowed and sacred this is the very first kavya that was ever written he who reads it will be purified and will not be made to suffer for his sins it grants long life the childless will have children after he listens to the story of the coronation of rama a poor man will become wealthy a kshatriya will subdue all his enemies and will be ever victorious women will all be as great as kausalya the men will be as dear to everyone as rama was one who listens to this story of rama the blameless the sinless will live long one who listens with devotion to this ancient kavya composed by valmiki will be able to conquer anger and will face the greatest of dangers with fortitude he will be reunited with his kins folk from whom he is parted after a long journey all his desires will be granted the gods are mindful of those who study the kavya with care those who listen to this story will be rewarded by the devas and the obstacles in their lives will vanish on their own accord the king who listens to this story will ever be victorious the traveler will have no difficulties women will be the mothers of sons one who worships this kavya and studies it every day will be absolved from all sins and will live long narayana the lord who is all pervading who has his abode in the ocean of milk and he is who is also called hari who has no beginning no middle and no end who is the lord of lords who is the ancient is rama and he will bless the one who studies this ramayana 
and the one who listens to the story of Rama. He will have wealth and children and he will have peace and contentment. All his desires will be granted. It grants long life, wealth, health, fame, comradeship with brothers, good intelligence, glory. The study of Ramayana will grant man all these. Repeat the story of Rama with reverence and may you be blessed. Let the world thrive by the grace of Lord Narayana. The Pitris are satisfied by the study of Ramayana by their descendants. The Devas are pleased. One who studies this Ramayana composed by Valmiki is certain to have won a place for himself in heaven. Om Tat Sat Harihi Om Om Shanti 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 Shri Rama Rama Rame 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 Mano Rame Sahasranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varana Ne Preface to Ramayana the book written by Kamala Subramanyam which I will be starting to read from today. Jai Shri Ram It has been universally accepted that the three epics Mahabharata, Bhagavata and Ramayana comprise our cultural heritage. It has been my dream to render all three of them into English in a manner which will appeal to the young people and my dream seems to have come true. I have finally managed to complete the narration of the Ramayana in the same vein as I have the other two. What is fascinating about these three treasure houses is the fact that each is completely different from the other. One cannot but think of the river Ganga in this context. Ganga hurling through space, rushing down in a torrent towards the earth from the heavens, makes one think of the great epic Mahabharata, which is full of action, full of passion, full of force, full of emotion. There is nothing placid about the flow of the narration. Now, think of Ganga as she enters the sea, when she becomes one with her lord. There is a feeling that the long, tortuous journey is ended, that the strife is over, that at last, at long last, all passion spent. She has found peace. This, to me, seems to compare with Srimad Bhagavatam. Let us watch Ganga between the, these two extremities, flowing calmly, placidly, in an unruffled manner, like the Mandakranta meter, chastened Everyone who comes in contact with her, this Ganga makes me want to compare her to the Ramayana. There is, in the Ramayana, everything that is beautiful and the very atmosphere is purifying. Drama is the first word which comes to the mind while reading the great epic Mahabharata. Bhakti, on the other hand, is the thread running through the entire narration of the Bhagavata. Pain is the predominant emotion in Ramayana. Pain is the monochord which can be heard throughout and yet this very pain is ennobling, purifying and satisfying. Ramayana is a trinodi filled to the brim with noble thoughts, noble sentiments, noble characters, not one of whom is spared the experience of pain. The Bhagavata has a mystic wheel which shrouds it throughout. The Ramayana, however, has less number of characters, but each is so clearly and sharply portrayed that we can almost see them. It is full of word pictures which reveal the sufferings of the different characters. The morning of the proposed coronation of Rama, when the young prince is summoned to the apartments of Kaikeyi, where he sees his father, the very picture of O, while Kaikei is different, to quote Rama. This was one of the most painful days in the life of Rama 
and how calm and composed he is when he is told about the banishment. The death of Dasharatha and the moment when Bharata comes to know of it. All these three scenes are so clearly described, one cannot forget them easily. Can one forget the other scene when Rama comes back to the ashrama at Panchavati and finds it empty? And we see Sita in Lanka in the Ashokavana like a figure carved out of suffering. Consider the latter scenes when Ravana's pride is humbled day after day and the ultimate heartbreak when he hears of the death of Indrajit. Ravana rises to tragic heights during the end when he faces the consequences of his tragic fault. And we see the truth of the Greek proverb, character is destiny. Ramayana has been called the Adhikavya. If one were to try and look at it, as one would at a Sanskrit drama and search for the predominant rasa, it is evident that the Ramayana is, in essence, full of viraha. Vipralambha Shingara, in a very wide sense. It is not just the separation of a husband and wife, but several partings of different kinds. The predominant motif of the epic is separation. The killing of the Kraunchā bird and the curse of Valmiki strike the keynote of the entire epic. Consider the number of partings. In the very beginning, Rishyashringa is parted from his father who was dotting on him. Later, Rama is taken away from his father by Vishwamitra, though the duration of the separation is short. Then comes the time when Bharata and Shatrugna are parted from their father as they go to KK. Nothing is the same when they come back to Ayodhya. Bharata's father is dead and his mother so changed that he refuses to consider her his mother any longer. And Rama was far away. There is the exile of Rama to the Dandaka forest, the great separation from his father and mother which kills the king and breaks the heart of his mother. We come to the poignant scenes in the Aranya Khanda when Rama suffers the pangs of separation from Sita. The Kishkinda Khanda is filled to the brim with sublime poetry when Rama pines for Sita on the banks of the Pampa and later at Praraswana, Prasravana when the rainy season visits the hill. We see Sugriva parted from his wife. Then follows the death of Vali and the lament of Tara. Again, later, we are confronted with a painful scene when Mandodari grieves for Ravana. Rama's coronation takes place and with Sita he spends a short happy time and again separation. Sita is sent away and Rama spends the rest of his life in loneliness. The Ramayana is a sad story. At the same time, Time, like a Greek tragedy, it is a very summit of poetic art. Unarm, arose, the long day's task is done, says Mark Antony. Even so, I am in a mood to say, a task which I undertook 30 years ago has now been completed and I feel a strange contentment stealing over me. I have but one regret. I only wish... Pujya Munshiji had been with us. He would have been happy. But for his words of encouragement, I would never have been able to do what I have done. I am extremely grateful to Swami Ranganath Ananda for having been gracious enough to write the foreword to the book. I feel very happy that he has blessed this book and highly honoured. Kamala Subramanyam who is Kamala Subramanyam? Kamala Subramanyam was born on October 4th, 1916 at Bangalore and educated in that city. The author had the privilege of studying under the distinguished professor B. M. Shikanthaya, professor and head of the English department, Central College, Bangalore and top literator in modern Kannada. 
she developed early in life an avid taste for english literature and particularly love for shakespeare's plays in 1937 she married dr v s subramanyam the renowned ent surgeon of madras preoccupation with family affairs did not come in the way of her literary pursuit she wrote a series of imaginary conversations on the model model of landus for the triveni under the pen name ketaki shrimati kamala subramanyam's condensation of the mahabharata and the shrimad bhagavatam both bhavan's publications have won wide acclaim and with her ramayana she successfully concludes her magnificent triad on the epics and puranas of india this latest offering marks a distinct landmark in her great voyage of self discovery on which she set off long years ago the epics and puranas epitomize our culture they are suffused with spiritual fervor their heroes and heroines are exemplars of nobility sublimity valor heroism steadfastness and chivalry and anyone reading them will find himself a little better a little nobler they have molded our outlook our way of life from times immemorial it is this priceless treasure of the spirit shrimati kamala subramanyam has tried to re- recapture for the benefit of the younger generation who alas are deprived of the spiritual inspiration and nourishment a master storyteller shrimat shrimati kamala subramanyam has retold the story of the perfect man the ideal man of the conception of the ageless valmiki lucidly simple elegantly if her mahabharata established her as a born narrator and in her shrimad bhagavatam she has soared to ecstatic devotional heights in her ramayana she has excelled herself in retelling the story of sri ramachandra a story so soul stirring so ennobling so elevating each one of the character stands out for the quality predominant in him or her but the focal point is the intensely human hero humane hero the shining symbol of dharma rama ramo विग्रहवान धर्म श्रीरामर्पणमस्त दर्थ ऑफ एन एपिक रायण जय श्री राम ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द रिवर तामसा स्टूड द सेज वाल्मीकि ही वॉज अब्सॉर्व इन द कंटेम्पलेशन ऑफ द सेंस ऑफ पीस फरवेडिंग द प्लेस all on a sudden he heard the twang of a bow string the whir of an arrow and the piteous cry of a crownchha bird whose mate had just been killed by the arrow valmiki was overcome with pain and compassion and when his eyes rested on the hunter who had parted the birds his mind was full of anger and he spoke harshly to the sinner मा निषाद प्रतिष्ठा तमगाम शाश्वती सौचमितुनादेकमवदी काम मोहित मीनिंग ओ हंटर एज यू हैव किल द क्रौंच बर्ड विच वॉज लॉस्ट इन द एक्सटसी ऑफ लव यू विल नॉट अटेन ब्लिस फॉर ए टर्निट the oyster they say breeds the pearl in a moment of irritation even so out of the heart of the poet whose soul is drenched with pain is born a poem thus was born the adi kavya the ramayana shri ram ram rameti rame rame manorame sahasra nama tatulyam ram nama varanane श्रीरामार्पणमस्त